In the previous video, we defined what we meant by a signal and a system. Now we're going to start kind of our journey working through this big list of words that we can apply to signals. In this first video, we're going to consider just this first bullet. What does it mean to be a continuous time signal? What does it mean to be a discrete time signal? And in the subsequent videos, we'll work through all these other definitions and examples and things like that. Well, first, let's just start with the difference between a continuous time signal and a discrete time signal. So a continuous time signal, x of t, and note the notation that we use there, we use the variable t, which we mean a continuous time variable, and then the parentheses there are important. So just looking at this right here tells us that we're dealing with a continuous time signal. It has a value specified at all points time. That means I can choose for t the number 0, I can choose for t the number 0 0.001, I can choose for t 17.57777. Any value for t that I want, I can query this continuous time signal and know the value. Discrete time signals, on the other hand, are described by a signal that is only defined at discrete points in time. So you could write it like this and then restrict the variable t to only a set of points, but almost always instead we use completely different notation and we, we write it like this. We say x of k and we use these square brackets instead of parentheses. So again, just looking at the notation, when I write this down, I'm telling you this is a discrete time signal. And instead of using t, which is what we use for continuous time signals, we usually use something like k or m or n. And now the values for this time variable can only take on values like 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 3, things like that. So for discrete time signals, the value for k equals 3.2 that doesn't even make sense. If I asked you to tell me the value of the signal x of k at k equals 3.2, that's not even a valid question because k has to be a discrete number usually defined on you know, the integers and, and negative integers. Okay, So that's our, our definition. In pictures, this is what we're dealing with. So on the left here, we have a continuous time signal. It is plotted versus the continuous variable t. And no matter where I go on the horizontal axis, I have a value of my signal. So no matter where I'm at, my signal has a value. Here on the right, I have the discrete signal. I've plotted it as x of t just so we can compare it easily over here. And I've put a dashed line that follows the original continuous time signal. But this signal is different. The only valid points on this signal are indicated by the blue dots. So in between, that first circle dot and that second circle dot, the original signal was defined, right? It had some values right there. But now for this discrete time signal, we can't access those values. It's only these two things that I've circled that are va valid points to query the discrete time signal. Sometimes when you disc draw discrete time signals, I'll actually draw the continuous line like I did here on the right, just because it's, it's easier mechanically for my hand to draw something smooth and then go back in and put dots. But don't be fooled by the dashed line. That dashed line does not indicate signal content. It's just there so we can compare back to this. The only values of the signal are these blue dots at those discrete instances in time. And in between times, right in here, in between the dots, there is no signal. We cannot access those values. So just kind of summarizing, you know, we're always going to use parentheses when dealing with continuous time signals. So writing down x of t, you know it's a continuous time signal, and we're always going to use the square brackets for discrete time signals. When dealing with discrete time signals, there's a quantity that we usually call capital T. It's called the sampling period, and we'll get into more about sampling in our discrete time course. But often, we have this relationship between kind of like an original continuous time signal and a discretized discrete time signal. And the way that we go from one to the other is via sampling. That's exactly what we did on the previous plot right here, right? We just grabbed these values in very discrete points in time, separated by a unit capital T, and grabbed those values. So that's exactly what this sampling period is. Maybe t is 0.1. So every 0.1, you're going to grab a value of the signal. So sampling period is one way to represent this sampling process. 
You can also represent it as a sampling frequency, F sub S. That's the sampling frequency. When I talk about sampling frequency, I'm talking about grabbing so many samples per second. So if T is 0.1, meaning grab a value at time zero, grab a value at time 0.1, grab a value at time 0.2, the sampling rate is one over 0.1 or 10, 10 samples per second. They're related by this simple equation. So if I tell you FS, you can easily compute T. If I tell you T, you can easily compute FS. Another thing that we often do is if I have a continuous time signal and I want to sample that signal to get the discrete time equivalent, doing that is very easy. All I have to do is replace the continuous time variable T with the discrete time quantity K times the sampling period. So again, if my sampling period is 0.1, here when I replace T with KT, I end up with K times 0.1. And now look at this, this signal right here no longer has the continuous time variable t, it only has k. So this is actually the discrete time signal f of k. And if I was to plot this signal, I would let k equal minus three and I'd get a number out, k equals minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, just plug all those values for k into your calculator, see what numbers come out, and that is the discrete time signal. All right, so that's a brief discussion of what it means to be a continuous time signal, a signal that's defined at all continuous time values t versus a discrete time signal, a signal which is only defined at discrete values k. In the next video, we'll look at the next set of definitions related to analog and digital signals.